All right, I want to do a review here, an overview of an app that's just taken our household by storm lately. It's called Stop Motion Studio. So Stop Motion Studio is an app used for making stop motion videos. It's it has a very strong slant towards making Lego-based videos, but you could use it for essentially anything. And so my kids have been all over this for the last weeks, so excited. As I've been doing the YouTube channel, they've been very interested and in paying attention to what I'm doing. They've actually helped me edit some video, and we're asking for some more kind of creative outlets. So my wife had the thought, well, let's make some stop-motion videos. We have a whole room in our house dedicated to Legos, and maybe they'd like to do that. I, I thought, well, we'd be able to take some pictures and, and I know how to edit video now so we can do that in, in the same way that I'm doing the YouTube channel. But then they went looking for something to make it a little bit easier and found their way to this. Again, Stop Motion Studio Pro. So this is an Apple-based app. It's available on iOS, iPadOS, and Mac too in the Mac App Store natively. There is a free version, Stop Motion Video, and the upgrade version for Stop Motion Video Pro. The, the free version lets you do quite a bit. But as soon as we started working with this, as soon as the kids got their hands on it and they wanted to do a little bit more with their videos, some more advanced editing and so on, we quickly, quickly bought the Pro version. It's $5 on the App Store for phone and iPad and it's $10 on the Mac App Store and you do have to buy them separately. But I would call it well, well worth the money. So let's take a look at this. Um, I am using my Mac, my MacBook Pro 16 inch, the new M1 Pro model here. I've got the app up in the Mac App Store. If you do get the Mac version, make sure that you get Stop Motion Studio Pro 2. That's the latest entry. As you can see, that's the one that's getting updated. Last update from the recording of this, of this video, actually, one day ago. This is actually, this, honestly, this is one of the best pieces of software that I think I've seen in a long while. The folks that are making this just deserve massive accolades for the capabilities, the ease of use, and everything that they've put into this. So let's take a look at it. We'll kind of go over the whole thing and, and talk about what can be done with it. I'm, I'm intending to put a little bit of compartmentalized kids content on the channel. My kids are so into this that they're making the stop motion videos. I'll probably make a kids, kids tech playlist and put some of that stuff in there. They're really interested in making how-to videos that other kids could watch to, to get involved in making things like this. So again, it's, it's taken our household by storm. They, they want to do this constantly, and they're having so much fun with it and learning a ton in the process as well. So this is the app itself. One of the, one, first off, one of the things I like about it so much is that it's very consistent between phone, iPad, and the Mac app. Basically, it, it, it's essentially the same app with very minor usability and interface alterations, of course, depending on if you're just using a touchpad or you have just the touch screen or, and keyboard and mouse and so on. So some things are easier to do on the mobile devices. Some things are better to do on the Mac itself. And it's super, super easy to port your projects back and forth. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. Of course, for the best pictures, you would probably prefer to, to source the video or source the content for the video on an iPhone using an iPhone camera and then maybe for editing move that over to an iPad or even preferably the Mac a Mac. So the the app opens here on the home screen. You can see there's some controls on the left. There's a list of projects here most recent. There's only one on my um, on my laptop right now. The news report that's one of the videos that my son was working on and probably one that'll end up getting posted to the channel. So here's just simply a list of your recent projects. If you have a bunch of them, of course, they would they would fill this up. If you go to the folder, this is a more complete list of your projects, not just the recently accessed one. And you have some nice options in here. Of course, you can sort by different criteria. If you have a lot of projects, you're trying to find certain ones. List view, which gives you actually a little bit of a timeline so you can see a little bit more about what might be going on in a video, trying to differentiate them, see them apart, or an icon view, very common stuff. One of the great things about this app, and there's not many of them here, actually they probably could add, a, add more hopefully over time, but there, there's a lot of great stuff here, is these embedded tutorials. Um, several video tutorials and a couple of collections basically showing how to, how to do some stuff. They go through the whole gamut of like helping, helping get inspired for how do, you, how do you put the idea of a video together, what are some best practices, recommendations for, for settings and, and so on, but also of course um, a big overview of how to use some of the more advanced features of the app itself, which is awesome. Sometimes it's hard to get kids 
they just want to dive in and, and, and use stuff and you know, not take the time to learn it. My son, my eight-year-old son, watched every single one of these. He, he's been enthralled by this, and it's just sent his mind spinning with like creative energy. Down on the bottom here is a way to just get out to the finder for, for loading projects in if you have a project file or whatnot. And then, of course, some settings, um, tool tips throughout the app, I think very helpful for, right, especially as you're going through it or using it for the first time. Shutter sounds if you're using the camera, pretty minor stuff. Preview quality, you can lower it if you have a weaker device um, as you're editing and, and interacting with stuff. And then you can set a background color for a default background for the app and, and so on. Default name for any new projects that you create. And then you can define, again, these are, these are default settings. These can all be changed individually for specific projects, but you can see you can do your projects in, in multiple aspect ratios, default 16.9, but you can do ultra wide, square, 4.3, and so on. Speed defines the, the default frames per second of your project. And in the tutorials, there's actually a really interesting tutorial that talks about film being done at 24 frames per second, of course, but animation often being done about 12, and they generally recommend 12, and why you might choose different FPS values for your projects. Um, of course, the more FPS you do, and the longer a given video might be, the more shots you have to take, and it kind of compounds the, the effort of animation and so on. So we've been using a, a little bit lower of a number six here which is which is fine somewhere between six and 12 i think is a good one and then quality default qualities all the way up to 4k in terms of when the, this is what the videos would be rendered at for output i'm really impressed by the the kind of wealth of these settings you can really custom tailor your projects and i keep mentioning my kids in the context of this but this is a really full-blown kind of production app i would say it's very powerful and it lets you do a lot of stuff so this is not just a kids thing and i think any kids that might get started and really get into this are going to learn a ton of, of really interesting technology and computer and kind of design and production types of things if i pick if i select on a given project here um, notice the the share button lit up if i'm off the project so with the share button I can choose to export the project or export the content in different ways. I can export the movie. I can export as an animated GIF. I can export just the images, um, a flickbook, which I actually haven't tried yet, or the project itself. So if I click one of these, say for example, you can see it, it renders the scene. It's, it's basically generating the movie video. And then I'm out to a finder window where I can store the default um, MOV file. One of the things that's awesome is as you need to move stuff around between different devices, depending on how you're making your videos, the sharing is, is exceptional. It, it really works great. So uh, my kids have been starting these videos using our iPads, essentially. And so they'll use this app on the iPads. They'll take the photos on the iPads and then wanting to come back potentially to the Mac to edit. You can do an export of the project and just airdrop it basically to the Mac or to another device. Uh, my daughter started a project on my wife's iPad and then we got her set up just recently with her own. She wanted to move that project to her own iPad. Sharing the project, AirDrop, iPad to iPad, it all just worked seamlessly. It moved the project right over, it kicked the project out of AirDrop right into the Stop Motion Studio Pro app. Just seamless and, and so I, I found that to be, it, it, I found that to be just excellent. The, the features in the coding and the thoughtfulness put into developing this app has been great. If I effectively right click on a project here, I get the, the pop-up window, play, open the project, these same share options that I got off of the share button, rename, go to finder, duplicate, and delete. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually duplicate this project because I don't wanna to touch anything potentially in my son's, my son's current work for the purposes of playing around with it for this overview and review, and I can delete this copied project when I'm done. So if we open this up, you can see we have pretty much a full featured video editing kind of production app here, right? We have a timeline and I can, I can go through it frame by frame. They're all numbered. I have the ability to, to add to this, to take photos, snapshots, and so on, advance. So it's right here in the project itself where you would actually be taking the photos and adding them to the project. 
or you can connect to an external camera. This, this app will, if you have a, a, a plug-in camera via USB or USB-C or whatnot, it will control that camera and allow you to take the photos that way. So if you were using the Mac as the capture and production device, you would be doing it with an external camera. If you're doing it with a phone or a tablet, you could just use the built-in camera on those and then move the project over for easier, easier editing. So amongst all the things that you can do here, there is a microphone option. You can record audio that you would embed into your video. So if you wanted to add your own external audio, uh, my kids have been recording themselves talking, representing the people and talking in each other's videos. My daughter, if there's a female character, my son, if there's a male character, doing other stuff like this with their friends. Is, they've had friends come over and kind of like collaborating on videos and that sort of thing, so in voicing the people. So you can record directly, and again, this works on all the devices, and embed that within the video itself. You can get to the project settings here. So these are similar, of course, to the settings that were available in the main app preferences section, but these would be applied specifically to this video. So if you wanna change the FPS speed of a given video, change various aspects of its cropping, aspect ratio, foreground, intros, and resolution, quality, all of this stuff is, is tailor, tailorable on a project by project basis. In here as well, you can do a variety of additions. So if I go to just a, another frame here, I'll go to frame eight and look at some of the things that we can add. Um, so we can add images basically from the, from the device. You can allow the app to have access to the, to the Mac Photos app and be able to pull images from there. I'm not gonna show that because I don't wanna necessarily put my, my personal pictures and thumbnails up in the video. But suffice to say, you can bring in external images embed them, move them around, and do all kinds of stuff like that. You can add title and credits, and so there's quite a lot here. Title, different title scenes, different credit scenes. You can add speech bubbles and backgrounds, and just add simple colors and so on as well. So if I wanted to add something to one of these frames, for example, a speech bubble on one of these characters, I can do that. I go into this specific frame editor. Lots of options here. Of course, I can change the text and everything is layered. So the, the main image is at the bottom. I can resize these things, move them around. So I can resize these things, I can move them around. It's all just based on working in the layers, making sure you have the right thing selected. These can be, layers can be changed, moved up and down. You can also add from here, drawing text shape, background and faces. We'll talk about some of those in a minute. So now if I go back, of course, now the hello is in the one is in the one frame there. Um, I can also add audio. There's all kinds of built-in sound effects, stock sound effects, stock theme music, and then other recordings, custom recordings. So if you make recordings and then attach them or add them in, but there's quite a bit here by default, of course, that's usable as well as being able to add clips or files and so on and embed. Let's go back into the frame editor and look at some of the other options here. So if you wanna add a drawing, this basically lets you draw right on the canvas of a given shot, right? You can change brush colors, sizes, and so on. With the default settings, as you notice here, I can basically just make a blob but lots of configurability depending on how you set that. I can add um, just discrete text. Again, it can be selected, resized, and, move, and moved around. If I double click, I get different fonts, italicized, alignments, and other ways to manipulate and manage what was inserted there. Shapes. Same thing, again, double click and you can see all the different types of callouts, shapes, arrows. Just, there's so much in here. Your creativity is essentially unlimited. And again, this is all default, all stock. I haven't imported anything, haven't inserted anything. It's very easy once something very easy once something has been added to get rid of it, delete it, copy it, move it frame by frame, and so on. One of the neatest things though is the faces. So my son has actually been editing his video here quite a bit with 
discrete faces on his Lego folks. So if I go to add a face and I edit this face, the way they have this app set up, and, and if you watch the tutorials, they basically recommend that if you're doing Lego stop motion, you record your people with their faces blank, turn the faces around so you just have the yellow blank face, and you can put all of your faces in in post. So there's a ton of different mouth options, as well as the ability to rotate these. And notice that it's rotating around the face. So if you have a Lego person that's not looking straight at the camera, but's looking over to the side on an angle, you're perfectly able with these controls to have that face looking in different directions with the right type of perspective applied to it. Again, all these different expressions, eyebrows, makeup, being able to rotate also in this dimension as you need to. And everything has also opac opacity, so it's just limitless. And my son has been sitting here just digging into this frame by frame with his people, with their faces, structuring structuring his scenes, structuring what he wants them to, to look like and do. Of course, again, I can kind of resize these faces down and I'd be able to move them and put them onto the given people where I want those faces to go. It's just exceptional. And as you go frame by frame by frame, the tool makes it easy, the program makes it easy for you to actually bring things forward. So I do plan, my kids are really interested, I do plan to have them do tutorial videos. They honestly know how to use this thing better than I do. Um, I just wanted to put it out there because I, th I thought this was great. I figured some other parents might be interested in this or some other folks for themselves, but again, particularly parents looking for a creative outlet for their kid, getting them, for their kids, getting them some opportunities to play around with some technology in a creative, in a constructive way. One other really neat thing that's in here is the ascent, is the ability to use this eraser. Where you can go, you, you can basically take things out. So it uses the prior frame and you can actually set a keyframe. Notice the hello and the black blob were in the prior frame and I'm erasing from the current frame. And what the tutorials say, what they talk about is, this is how you really manipulate things in space. So if you were gonna have a bird fly through a scene and you had it on a string as it was going across the screen, you're able to set a, a base frame of the background and then in the frames where the thing is animating across or flying across, you can erase the string. If you have to have your fingers doing something in a given shot, you can very easily erase that. There's ways to, to, to erase, by default, it will erase to the prior frame, but there's ways to also set basically a, a, a default keyframe of sorts, and you can erase if you have to do multiples very easily. Again, this thing is a full-fledged editing tool, and even my eight-year-old is just tearing through this thing and figuring stuff out. And very quickly, he's gotten better with it than I have. So that's a, that's kind of an overview of the of Stop Motion Studio Pro. I can't recommend this enough. You look again. You're looking for a creative outlet for your kids, particularly if they're into Legos and in, and not only the video side of it, but challenging them to create an interesting little short story. Right, go through the production process of it. Storyboard something. Turn that storyboard into something that they can see and hear and show other people. So I will have more covering this app. Again, I'm intending to do it from the, the, the kids' point of view, letting them kind of demo different things and show, make some of their own tutorial videos for the neat things that they found in here and how they do it. And then actually share some of their creations as well. I'll probably, I'm gonna make a uh, kids' tech playlist on the channel. Try to keep that a little compartmentalized from the, the main home theater focus. So if you have any questions, if there's something that, that I can have them record or we can demo about this app, go ahead and put it in the put it in the comments. If you've made some really cool stop motion things, particularly with this app, you know, go ahead and link to them in the comments as well. Unbound creativity intersected with technology. Love it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content.